So digital marketing 101, we're going to start with that. Um, why am I qualified to talk to you guys about this? I've never marketed an indie game before, that's true. However, I have worked in a, in the, um, in a marketing uh, development agency, a digital agency, for uh, quite a while. And now where I work is at a company where we actually train people on marketing a whole lot of different things. So the, the same concepts will apply uh, to whatever you want to market online. So there we go. That is why I'm here. Oh, and um, my alias online, if you want to get hold of me, is damn it. Long yeah. story. I'm very happy to tell you that story at another time. Cool. Just to be clear on what we're not, well, what I'm not going to be talking to you about tonight is any of the paid advertising. Because when I think about indie developments, indie developers, I know that you guys are on a minimal or less than minimal budget. So none of the Facebook advertising, none of the Google advertising, none of the paid advertising. I'm also not going to talk to you about the PR as well, because that's quite a different section, and it, it sort of gets involved with social media as well, which I can cover at a later point in time. Not touching that today. And just because I'm not sure what level everyone is on, I know we do have some marketers in the room. I don't know if they're still here. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> um, and, uh, don't ask questions. <laughs> no, please don't. <laughs> don't ask. No questions allowed. Okay, so just so that we're all on the same page, I'm going to picture that uh, you don't know anything level, but don't take offense to that. So just in case you never knew, that and that section of a Google search is all paid for advertising. So that is also not the sections that I will be talking about. What I am going to be talking to you about is that. <laughs> <laughs> so you want to get there. Get, get into the, the screen. The stuff. Yeah, the free stuff. That's what I'm like. That sells dog food. That's Wikipedia. Yeah. No, yeah, they, they do, actually, they do. Okay, anyway. We just learned something. Okay, my, my work here is done. Okay, so, you guys want to market your game. Awesome. The first thing about marketing is having something that is marketable. So, if you don't have a product, if you don't have something to sell, don't start. But, having that said that, if you have a game that is not quite finished, but it's at a point where it is playable, it is something that you can share with other people, it is fun, people are telling you it's worth something, so people are telling you that they will pay for it, that is the point where you start marketing. Marketing an already finished game is much more difficult than marketing a game that's in the process of development. So keep that in mind and don't leave this till the last thing that you do. And it's actually much easier. Questions later. I just add to that. Okay. Alex Bruce, Alexander Bruce from Made Anti Chamber, he literally just said you've got to practice marketing to start early with your game so then you can make mistakes before it, like large numbers of people care. Don't do it right at the end. Cool. Exactly. No, that's exactly the thing. Um, a lot everyone you talk to about marketing indie games will agree with that point. You need to start marketing your indie game soon. So you have an indie game, you're sort of on track, you know you're gonna get somewhere, you have a team or you're working by yourself, what do you need? It is absolutely vital that you have a space online that you can put your game. So people need to be able to find it, download it, read about it, whatever. So website is vital. WordPress um, actually has some great uh, themes and whatever, and it's, it's free, you can do a lot with it. You guys can code, you can make it look beautiful. Uh, you should be doing that. There's a little bit of disagreement um, within the marketing community about whether indie gamers should keep their website and development blog separate. I would absolutely advocate that you keep them together. It just makes logical sense. But some people do argue that you should have an isolated landing page for purchasing or downloading the game. That's up to you. Again, I would say keep them together. It just makes more sense. And then Facebook. 11% of the world's population is currently on Facebook. If you're not, that's just stupid. Uh, <laughs> it just, you know, what, why, why not? Why not target 11% of the world's population? And uh, Twitter is an interesting one because of the way uh, indie games are, well, they, they're quite character-driven, character personalities-type brands. That There's a lot to do with them. There's a lot of interesting strategies you can use on Twitter. Um, it's a very good avenue, but you should have an account that isn't just your personal account. Having a personal Twitter is really good for self-branding, but you do need to have your game account. And on a side note, what I've always thought that the QCF guys should do is that they should have a GOAT account, and the GOAT should be talking to the audience much like the Joburg Zoo has a badger. On a, on a completely off topic note, but anyway. 
<laughs> Guys, go look up the Joy, Joy Big Zoo. They have a badger. They have a honey badger. They have tweets. It is, it is the most awesome thing. Anyway. Oh, and it tweets as the actual badger is moving around its cage, so it's relevant to where the badger is. Very awesome idea. Anyway, these are things that marketers get excited about. <laughs> okay, nice to have. Google Plus is an interesting platform because it is the kind of people uh, that would uh, fill your target market. It's, it's very technically minded people that use Google Plus. They're also more engaged with uh, the things that they're engaged with on Google Plus compared to someone who's on Facebook. It's just a like and a share if you're lucky. With Google Plus, they're likely to actually um, write essays and compare things and do more exciting things. But it, it makes it more tricky just to use it as a marketing tool. Much smaller audience. It's actually a very large audience, surprisingly, but just very technically minded. Compared to, compared to Facebook. Facebook's its own thing. A YouTube <laughs> channel. If you guys have content that you can video, and I'll make games is also joining that crowd that can use video. Um, having a YouTube channel is an extremely useful marketing tool, and it can be used together with, um, with your other marketing tactics. Because there's a lot of stuff going on on YouTube, it's important to use it in combination with other things. So it's, it's a nice to have, not a must have. OK, so let's get on to your website. Um, the first thing you want to do with it, once you have a website is obviously get, get it, search, uh, getting it into the search results. And what, uh, just again, going back to basics, I just want to cover what a search result is made up of. So just so that you know that is a page title, that section is the URL. And then you have the metadata or meta description. So what is important to notice here is obviously that I searched for dog food. It was just, but and you can see that because the dog food is highlighted in three different places. Notice that dog food is highlighted in three different places because that means that they've inserted the word dog food as a key phrase in three different places. I'm going to come back to this point later, but very very important. Cool. So. Search engine optimization is also called SEO. And it's what, when, when a brand or company comes to a digital marketing agency, one of the first things that happens is they go through the SEO process, which is where the SEO experts um, sit down and analyze what they're doing with their website. And often, if they haven't built a website at that point in time, the, the analysis from the SEO experts and the advice will actually structure a lot of what the, the website will will determine a lot of how the website is structured because SEO is so vital in, and it incorporates every part of your website building, every part of the thinking in using a website that you actually need to incorporate it right down to the core, right down to the coding. Of course, it can be used in reverse once you already have a website, which is what I'm going to show you how to do. Huh. Mm. Ah, okay. So, there's five sections to uh, SEO, and this is also obviously the very basics of it. And SEO experts spend a lot of time ensuring that the web structure uh, is easily crawlable for the search engine uh, crawlers. So what this means is that when Google send, or Google, Bing, Yahoo, whatever, sends out their crawlers, that the crawler is able to access every part of the site and is able to understand what the website is actually about. In order to rank your page correctly, for the users who are searching for what you're trying to sell. It also tests the usability of your site. Because if, if users are bouncing from your site, and if your site is taking a long time to load, for example, Google's not going to want to send, is that the 10 minute mark? That's cool. <laughs> we are so far from the middle right now. Um, OK, so if Google wants to. If Google wants to make sure that your site is something that they want to bring up in their search results, they're going to check that it's user friendly. Then, then the SEO guys do a lot of keyword research. They figure out where the keywords need to go. And then they, they talk about keeping your website up to date and relevant, which is important because Google will be looking out for decay. Any old websites, it's not going to really want to put on its first page results. And then link building is about bringing authoritative links from other websites to your website. Anyway, let's get started. So um, going through a basic website audit. And I did volunteer desktop of dungeons for this audit. <laughs> so we're going to just see. <laughs> super insulting. Um, consulting, not insulting. Oh, no. Super <laughs> possibly insulting as well. OK. OK, so 
The areas you want to look at when you're doing a website audit, and these are obviously not everything, but uh, doing a quick one, you want to look at the links and URLs, how they're working. Sitemap, whether it's been created for the user experience. And, and, and there are different tools for different parts of this. Uh, user testing is very, very important because you might think your website is amazing. You might think that it's easy to use and it might make sense to you because you made it. But getting someone else to use your website will tell you a lot about whether it's actually a good experience for other people. And then analyzing things like your meta description, like your keywords, you can use a tool like Feed the Bot. I will include these links online later. Cool. So, going through desktop dungeons. Okay, luckily, um, when, we looked at, when I looked at the source code, you guys do not have Java on click actions, but you do have the HTML for your links. This makes it easier for the crawlers to understand where the links are going. Your URLs are static, which is good, but they're not descriptive. So this is one of the pages on your desktop dungeon site. You guys might know what that page is about, but for Google, just looking at that URL doesn't tell you anything about the page. It doesn't tell you what desktop dungeons is. It doesn't tell you what that page is about. But it does tell you, for a person like me, that the person who wrote the title for that page probably studied journalism. <laughs> because that is an interesting title that would work well in print. When you've got to be writing titles and you're writing articles for the online environment, you've got to be quite literal, in fact, very literal, and very descriptive. So this, I believe, was for one of the uh, uh, updates. It's a news article. And a better sort of title that you could have used here would be like, November update, special edition, indie game, or whatever, something like that. That makes it more descriptive. Google then knows what your website is about. If you, talk, if you go back to the first example that I showed you, it was Wikipedia dog food. That page was definitely going to be about dog food and was absolutely accurate. Yeah, okay, this is going a little bit uh, into the dark area, but your anchor text is the text, obviously, that's linking you to other areas of your page. I and mean, it's important that you direct users to other areas of your page as well as your crawlers through links that are clickable. The, the text here is special edition, which is somewhat descriptive, it's good. I know that clicking on that, take me to special edition. Google also knows that that area, those fra that phrase is more important than the text around it. But all I know is it's, it's special edition. If it was special edition download or purchase special edition, that makes it slightly more descriptive. Cool. Uh, and most pages are linked to you from each other. Very good. But I will come back to that point later as well. Unfortunately, I, I couldn't find a sitemap. Google also doesn't know of any sitemap on your site. So please fix that. <laughs> it's a randomly generated sitemap. Google needs to defeat the boss. Fair enough, fair enough. Google's working on that. <laughs> they probably are. They probably are. Um, okay, so the user experience. Uh, using uh, Google's Developer Insights tool, which is very useful, it, it gives you a long list of insights based on a whole lot of uh, factors. It scores you guys 79 and 66 on mobile, which is a very good score. And Summing up most of the feedback is that the loading time is too long, which is, would re reduce your ranking overall for certain key phrases. User testing, one of the important aspects to look for in user testing is your navigation bar, because this is the area that your users are going to interact with and figure out your website the most. So that, that is their connection to you and connection to understanding what you want them to do. So although this is a very big and clear navigation, it's confusing well, the first part in that you have a logo that's in an unusual spot. It's in the middle. Users are now used to having the logo on the far left-hand side in the top corner, and it must uh, clicking on it will take you to home. This one does take you to home. It's just too large, and it's in a strange place. It's, just, it's a little unnerving for someone who's used to best practice. So that's the first thing. Then the second thing is you have three actions on different sides of this massive logo. And it just says that you, you are confused about what you want the user to do. You're not sure if you want the user to play, to buy, or free. So you need to be clear on what the action is that your user needs to take. Be very gentle with your users. Give them one thing to do, the next thing that they have to do on your page. Here I would suggest something like having play being the one button, getting to their page, and then the top thing being purchase or download for free or whatever, and then giving them more options. Don't overwhelm them with options to begin with. It creates a little bit of trouble. And finally, the, the question of do you, do you link to everything on your pages? 
apparently there are forums. <laughs> Don't know where you find those, but there are somewhere. Cool. Okay, so Be the Bot gives you a whole lot of um, different results when you put your URL into its tools, but um, a small snippet of it is just looking at the meta, dis meta description and the title. The reason why Desk of Dungeons is considered too short a title is because, again, you want to be very literal and very specific with Google. You want to tell Google what your page is about so that it knows. Desk of Dungeons could be about anything. Like, there is no indication that it's a game. There is no indication that it's purchasable. There's no indication that it's even about computers. It's just an online website. That's all Google knows, and then there's no description. And the description is the meta description that will appear in the Google search results, which gives you the opportunity to tell users what you're about and what they need to do next, which is usually to click through to your page and actually continue with the journey. So those are two missed opportunities there. Oh, I thought we had uh, we were doing that subcategory thing. So instead of the description, each category would pop up? So you do have the subcategories, but you have no meta description. What Google does is it pulls like the text from the top of the page. So you can still have a meta description that will appear above your subcategories. And I think you can actually have a meta description for each of your categories to indicate the whole system. So yes, you have that. So when you search for you guys, and when you search for desktop dungeons, you get the whole list of all the different pages, but you're missing out on that opportunity to actually be like, this is what our page is about. This is what you need to do next. This is what this sub page is about. Cool. Oh my goodness. Okay, I'm gonna go <laughs> as quickly through Keyword research, which is a big part of SEO. So it's broken down into three phases. And the first one is brainstorm. So for this section, I volunteered the Makers Eden site because I had a particular experience with this site. And um, after those guys had come to talk to us about their really cool game, I'd listened, I thought this was really good. And then went home, went to sleep, went to work, did some other stuff, life happened. And then, like three days later, I wanted to play the game. I have a terrible memory for names, and I think most people do. I couldn't remember what the name of the game was, and I could not remember anyone's handles. So I searched for key phrases in Google that I thought would get me to their website, assuming that that would be logical. I spent half an hour searching, couldn't find anything, and eventually came to the forums. That's unusual behavior for users to spend that much time searching. They're usually going to give up much quicker, um, depending on how determined they are. So I took a look at the site once I actually found it, and using a tool called To The Web, the spider test tool, the keywords found on the Makers Eden page are on the left, and versus the, the key game descriptions that I came up with, understand having played the game, and the branding. So you can see quite the disparity there. Um, so the things that you want to think, when you're thinking about brainstorming keywords, you want to think about what someone who's trying to find a service or product like the one you're offering would be searching for if they didn't know what your game was called. So those are the kind of key phrases you want to put in. And then again, I went back to Desktop Dungeons because they're an easy victim here. And this is the basic kind of um, a very quick brainstorm. But I mean, this, this kind of brainstorming can be much more advanced. You know your game better than anyone else. So some ideas, but you can also, then you would mix and match these phrases. Once you've got a nice long list going, you will need to do the research and you will use um, an AdWords tool. I guess free to sign up, but I'm just gonna show you how to get through it because finding the free tool is a little bit more difficult. So tools and analysis, keyword planner. Then you go find search for keywords. Then you get this overlay. You need to select the middle, top middle. And then here you would put in your list of keywords. I don't think there's a limit, but mix and match as much as possible. Key phrases. As one to five words, I suppose, and just see what happens. Long, key ta not long tail phrases can be more useful. And then you use the middle button. You get a result like this once you click there. And you would be looking at average monthly searches versus competition. And this is also a bit weird to deal with, so we can download. So will export it nicely to a CSV. And you get something beautiful like this once you play with it. So now that you have the data, the things that you want to look at here are um, obviously, the average monthly searches indicate 
what people are searching for, glo this is the globally, because locally is not that important in South Africa for indie games. And then the competition here, you can actually see it's very low. That's the only one that's reaching medium, but otherwise very low, which I think is quite interesting. Because what I think is happening is that lots of indie game developers are not using any sort of marketing tool, or very few are, which means that the competition for the kind of phrases like indie games is actually quite minimal. This is specific, specifically focused on paid media, but it does give you an indication of how many indie games, well, there's millions of indie game developers, but how many of them are actually implementing SEO? Which means... <laughs> <laughs> no, seriously, there's one. He's in the UK. So, so the thing is, you have a unique opportunity to rank really highly, really quickly, and stay up there for a really long time because you gain authority the longer you stay there for various reasons. But that is, that is a big thing. You don't normally see numbers like that for important phrases. There are two other aspects you need to think about when you decide which key phrases are going to be the best key phrases for you to use. They are, there's like two more slides. Okay. <laughs> and so the first thing you need to think about is the propensity to convert. This is the likelihood that someone who's typed in their phrase is to convert on your game, which would either be to download or to purchase, depending on what you want to do. So for instance, um, the bottom one here, uh, which is desktop dungeons download. Although there's only 210 global monthly searches, the propensity to convert here is like 100%, but that's a full key phrase. They so will find us. They, they will find you. They will they find you. Find us. Desktop you guys are ranking for desktop dungeons first. You don't have to worry about that. You definitely are. So that's the propensity to convert. Although there's only 210 searches globally on average per month, that is a 100% conversion rate, because they definitely will download. Whether they will buy is now another thing. Um, then you need to look at value per league. Value per league is the implied amount of spend based on the actual key phrases. So, for example, the very quick example is if you use the phrase luxury, so luxury furniture has a higher value per league than cheap furniture. You're just likely to get more money from the person typing that in. Not necessarily true, but that's how it's worked out. So putting all of those things together, you figure out what's going to work for you and what isn't. And then you do this. You insert your key phrases. And there are, generally speaking, and it's not a um, defined rule, but it's, it's an easy rule to work with. You choose a primary, a secondary, and a tertiary key phrase. Your primary key phrase you want is the definite description of that page and then you have two sub-descriptions. Then you would insert those phrases uh, three times, two times, and once, and then you would want to put them in the prime location. So uh, URLs, page titles, meta descriptions, and so on. This tells Google that that is definitely what your page is about. So, and, and actually I want to make a note here while, while he creeps up on me. <laughs> Image alt tags are actually a really important thing because you, that means you rank highly in the other vertices of the Google search, which is the image search. So make sure your image alt tags are not captions, but actual descriptions that use your key phrases. So here are two completed examples of what you could do as good examples. So here, your three key phrases inserted like that into your title. You can use them in your URL as well. And then what's important here is in your meta description, you have 165 characters. You need to make it descriptive of what, you get, what your page is about, because you need to make them different for every page. And include a call to action, which is your actual telling your user what you want them to do next. Not kill me. <laughs> so click to play now. Let them know very gently that it's the next step that they need to take. Once they're on that page, you can tell them to buy now. It's the, it's the very slowly guiding them to what you want to do. Cool.